so for the hook, I'm going to use uh, 230BLs, the Hanex again, uh, size 12 in this case. It can be tied, this fly can be tied all the way down to 18s. Uh, 12 is more on the big side of it for uh, the range of, uh, that this pattern is tied in. This is a pattern that through competition angling was uh, used a lot by the French. Uh, it's incorporating the principle of hot spots on a pattern. And since the French did so well with it, they just nicknamed it the Frenchy for, again, a lack of a better term. So I'm going to use uh, a tungsten bead again. <clears throat> the size of this bead to match this hook <coughs> is going to be a 332nd. Uh, and as I said earlier, if you're going to tie any nymphs, use tungsten. Don't, don't try and cheap out and go with brass or something because it's cheaper. Uh, if you're losing a lot of hooks, maybe in that case, pick a different technique or, or uh, you can do that. But overall, I prefer to use the best quality hooks I can in the case of the rare times I can get on the water and not wanting to lose it. Now I'm going to try to uh, hold this behind so you can see, but again, if you, this camera quality is not the, the very best, but you can see how the turned up point on this hook, how effective that could be. And again, this is a hook that's designed to be barbless, so it's uh, definitely going to be a bit better of a holder. So the bead in place, this one here, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, of this flat flat wire uh, lead tape again on it, but just a real small thin thin strip. I don't want to overdo it. Don't want to put too much on it, and again lose the profile of it. The only problem with this lead tape that you find is trying to get the sticky backing off. It can be a bit of a challenge, but just using your scissors, you can scrape it, and it'll come off quite easily. What's that? You, you can get that from golf club shop. Oh, can you get it? Oh, yeah, oh they added it onto the face yeah, of the club or added the, the, the club. Yeah. Where do you get it from? Golf club shops. It's probably a lot cheaper there than what you pay for it in a fly shop. <laughs> so again, just you you could really use uh you could use lead wire if you want for this pattern or whatever your choice is. It really doesn't matter, but Again, I just prefer the uh, slimmer profile I get by using the uh, tape. So you put that in the top half? I wrapped it all the way around the uh, shank of the hook there again. Just yes, up. No, I mean you use just half of the top half of the hook. Front, front yeah, just front on the, the front half. Yeah, I just want to imitate that um, sort of taper of the uh, abdomen as it gets up towards the thorax. So again, I'm just going to lock this bead into place and I'm going to hold the... Uh, the thread again over the tape just so it's going to help to uh, keep this from moving it or locking it in between the wraps and just trim off the excess and again uh, if you're going to use thread what I always recommend is, is going on the principle of uh, fluorescence and such and UV is pick something that's fluorescent uh, if you're not sure again take your flashlight you'll know in an instant if you hit it if it, if it actually has a fluorescent quality because it's going to kind of glow. Uh, the key with this pattern too is they're relying on the fact that it's going to be a bit more visible maybe in a bit more uh, colored up water but also in general low light conditions or fishing in deeper water. So I'm just going to carry this down <clears throat> and I'm going to bring it a little bit down the bend of the hook and then bring it back and just sort of let it hang just where the bend starts. So what it's going to do is leave a little orange tag at the very tip. <clears throat> For the tail material on this, you can use a variety of different uh, materials. <clears throat> this one here, I'm going to use uh, wood duck. Actually, this is from Hook and Hackle in Lethbridge, Alberta, back in the, I think, the 70s or so. I inherited this from an uncle of mine. But uh, again, trying to find good fibers is always a challenge. Uh, you don't necessarily want to pick pick strands where. <clears throat> The little stripes or bars in them are, are too far apart when you're tying a small pattern. So you're going to want to dig through your package and find one of those little gems that are going to have it nice and tight, like you can see in this case here, <clears throat> especially for the size of this pattern. Uh, the tail fibers, you probably only need, need about seven or eight of them in there, just enough to give you the look of it. Overdoing it isn't necessarily going to... Uh, give you the same effect that you would think. Uh, quite often <clears throat> tying these small flies, <clears throat> uh, 
you have to keep in mind that the trout can really see these fine details, things that we may not see quite so close, but uh, trying to overdo it, I've seen guys that put real thick bushy tails on these small flies and they really don't make a difference. If anything, it slows it down for sinking. So again, so I'm going to just make this this tail on this, so it's sort of sort of about almost almost a third of the actual body or a little bit longer. It's not going to really matter as far as length, but just as you would tie any other fly, use your, your general reference that you would use for your uh, tail fibers. And I'm just going to cut this off up here and then just lock this down. And again, try to build a nice taper underneath the uh, body material beforehand and bring it back towards the point. Uh, next, for the uh, ribbing on this, I'm going to use a, a they're calling it small, soft red wire. Uh, the problem that you have with a lot of patterns, especially when you tie small flies, is that a lot of guys will end up using wire that is too thick and it looks disproportional when you actually see the end result. So uh, sometimes you have to actually experiment with it and then write down and take notes as to what did look right and got the right uh, effect that you were hoping for. Okay, in, case, in this case of this wire, just on second thought, looking at it, it is too thick in my mind. So, uh, just goes to show, don't <clears throat> don't just grab the closest thing and assume it'll work. When you actually hold it up by the pattern, you'll get a good idea of what would work or not. So, what I'm actually going to switch over to is an extra small. And again, for a hook of this size, it's going to look a little bit better and a little more subtle. You don't necessarily on smaller flies want to overdo the ribbing. This hook here is uh, size 12. So for a size 12 or 14, I'd use the extra small for this pattern. So I'm just gonna lay this uh, wire down and again, all the way up to the, uh, up to the bead, lock it down, and then bring my uh, thread right back to the tail again and just leave this off to the side. <coughs> for the body material, <coughs> I'm just gonna use pheasant tail, just a plain center. Uh, natural color. You can use this in black or whatever color you might want to do. You could use olive if you're trying to uh, imitate some, uh, may, you know, uh, blue wing olives or such. And just grab a few fibers, maybe uh, four or five at the most. Just pull them off. And this is going to be the, the body material. So you're, of course, you're going to want to start with the thinner material at the tip, working towards thicker at the, the front of it. So for this, I'm going to actually uh, lay it underneath and just try and lock this down here and then just bring my thread forward and stop at the bead. Uh, one other thing I should mention which I didn't do with this here, the thread should actually be uh, uh, probably more beneficial to use an 8 aught than a 6 because 6 is a little bit thick for a thin pattern like this. So for the body I'm just going to hold my fibers and just rotate this bringing it forward Again, making sure all the wraps are touching the previous ones, but they're not actually overlapping. And then bring it up towards the bead. And then uh, take your bobbin and lock it down here. <coughs> so as you can see, it's just a nice slender profile. It's not a very thick, big heavy fly, which is again going to allow it to sink a little bit quicker in the water. I'm going to throw another half hitch in here again just because I do not want this to uh, come unraveled because there's no way to recover once you've cut your uh, body material that short. And for the ribbing, I'm going to actually counter wrap it on this one here just because it's pheasant tail. Just bringing it forward, just leaving a nice even gap between each of the wraps. And what this does, it just gives it a nice sort of shine of, of a reddish hue uh, in between the fibers so that the fish will kind of uh, see this and be a little bit more attracted to it. Again, I'm just going to do my same old thing of putting the bobbin over to lock this material down and wrap it around and 
trim off the excess. You can pull and rip it. I see a lot of guys that do pull and rip their uh, wire. If that works for you, that's great. But when you're tying some of these smaller flies, sometimes you can actually pull it too much and you'll pull it through and crush the fibers on here. <clears throat> so now for the head, <clears throat> sorry, behind the, um, the bead itself, all it's going to consist of is just a hot orange hot spot up here. So you're just going to do several wraps, trying to keep it tight to the bead. When you think you're at the point where you've got enough, back off because you're going to do a whip finish. So quite often the biggest problem with these flies, this may be the case in the case you're using six aught instead of eight, a lot of guys tend to get too much thread build up at this point. Uh, you could take and add a little bit of varnish to your thread when you do this knot here. But again, being a smaller fly, this one here doesn't tend to come undone a lot. So again, uh, this here is, is the, uh, the Frenchie. Um, it's very similar to the uh, just a plain old pheasant tail nymph that you might tie. <clears throat> it's very hard to see in this lighting here, unfortunately, to, to tie it or even to show the colors of it. But when, when you have a pattern like this, again, just keeping in mind what trout can see, those small hot spots will kind of show up and be a little bit more visible to the fish in the water.